Okay, so I'm here to talk about, um, well, I'm Tom Harding, and I'm an um, open source contributor and a uh, uh, maintainer of Bitcoin XP. Um, I'm here to talk about uh, one of the main reasons why I don't worry about increasing the block size or the transaction rate um, to many multiples of the current level of one megabyte every 10 minutes. And the reason is uh, Satoshi's invention of simplified payment verification. Um, <clears throat> some people might uh, not think that verbal proofs uh, are simple, uh, but actually it, it's really more, well I think of a scalable payment verification because even in the, even in the uh, white paper uh, or the or Satoshi provided the diagram, it's about pruning, it's about reducing the amount of space that a node needs to do verification. Um, and uh, I was going to go into a, a, a review of SBB, but I can tell that everybody in this room is very well versed in all this. So um, the basic idea is to look at how can we, uh, well, what are some of the criticisms that are leveled against SBB right now? First of all, uh, you hear that the mining network can try to break the rules, uh, and SPV clients totally trust the mining network. You hear that network providers they don't get information. Um, you hear that uh, privacy, the all privacy concerns related to blue uh, filters. To my knowledge, the first two vulnerabilities have never been exploited to, to any uh, great extent or meaningful degree, despite millions of SPV wallets out there in current use and historically. Um, the, the third vulnerability um, was explored in, in some academic papers, the, the one in particular, um, but in checking in with the, the SPD wallet vendors, they're actually already ahead of that paper in terms of mitigating. The biggest risk that that paper mentioned was that uh, the, the practice of the original Bitcoin J code where they would stuff both the hash uh, address and the pub key directly into the uh, filter, and so therefore it would be very easy to determine for sure if the filter contains a certain address. Um, but but uh, Redwall, for example, doesn't do that. It only puts the hash in there. It's just uh, traded off simplicity. If I say anything wrong, James, you can correct me. So the outlook is quite a bit brighter than some of what we constantly hear about SPV. I won't speculate too much on why um, we might want people might want us to believe that SPV is dangerous, um, but, but we are told this. Now this this up here is a demonstration that's been given twice, where where this individual um, shows that Android Bitcoin Android wallet receiving a two point one million dollar payment, uh, and he in the talk talks about how it compares to mercury poisoning and playing with fire and that's pretty much by definition of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Um, that you would trust the centralized API over bit over blue filters. Um, the actual privacy risk is probably harder to measure than the actual security risk, so we don't really know exactly who's out there collecting all of our information. And you, you can't, you really can't argue with the fact that it has, it's less private than having your own full node. But the real question is that that presentations like this leave out is what, how can we make it better? And that's what we're here for, to try and figure out how we can improve things. And there, there are basically, there's basically two ways to, to improve things, which I'll get to in a second. Briefly, I wanted to mention what Satoshi said about, uh, about making it better. Um, he said that it, there's not much in the white paper, but he said that one strategy is to uh, receive alerts or fraud proofs when uh, the mining network breaks the rules, and then, then at that point, the SPV node should download the full block. But that doesn't make that much sense to me because an SPV client can't validate a full block. Um, and also, um, if we want to scale, the block would be very large, so it's not going to be very easy for an SPV client to do that. So um, he doesn't give us a lot of, of guidance on that. Um, but the thing to know about fraud proofs is that absence of a fraud proof uh, can uh, only build confidence probabilistically. So for example, if you're expecting to be told that 
well, if there's a double spend, if your transaction that pays you is a double spend, and you're not told that, um, well, you, you, some evidence that not hasn't happened, but not for sure. If you're not told that by a larger number of nodes, then you have more evidence that it hasn't happened, and that's good. And for some things like double spend, that's actually always possible in an unconfirmed uh, environment. And unconfirmed transactions are very important to SVP wallets because users want them to be, so they always will be. Um, on the other hand, a positive proof, which is proof to, uh, that some of the, like that your transaction, if if, if your if your SPV wallet hadn't been given proof that a two point one million dollar UTXO had been spent in your favor, your wallet could say, well, I'm I don't consider that transaction valid. Um, so by building com uh, confidence and privacy is a challenge that we have, and it's worth it for SPV because because SPV is the way. That most people will use that most people use Bitcoin today. It's the Bitcoin people actually use. So we should be spending more time on asking how can we increase that number. Uh, so input proof and spend proof things that can happen. Um, I don't want to get sidetracked too long on this uh, on how to do this, but basically what I would say is this is the this is a map of a, a transaction that an SPB wallet might receive. And today what you would see is this orange one, M, which is the transaction that pays you. The Bitcoin node is also kind enough if that, if that one of the outputs is, of M is later spent, it will tell you about that. So the white one, MS, is also tells you about that. But what it doesn't tell the SPV wallet about is any of the blue ones, which is tracing back the inputs of the node wallet that pays you to blockchain. So, and there's lots of great information there, such as, was there really 2.1 million uh, Bitcoins ready to be spent uh, on you. Uh, and that can all be anchored in the blockchain with verbal proofs. So the wallet itself, without getting a ton of information, or just with having the header chain and with the verbal proofs of these uh, things, can know for sure uh, how much fees were paid, which it doesn't know today, how much uh, the inputs were worth, uh, how many unconfirmed transactions are uh, it's depending on. Um, and what fees they pay, uh, and all kinds of information that will help. So this is a their cooperation that's necessary between SPV wallets and the, the full nodes, or I should say, uh, the network nodes. Because uh, <clears throat> what it also opens up is the question of how well is our current network of 4,000 or probably less right now, or somewhere around 4,000 nodes, do at uh, serving SPV wallets. Um, the, the, just to recap, the original Bitcoin network looked like this. We had all the nodes doing three things, mining, running a full node, and being a wallet. Um, today, it's changed a bit. We have uh, the mining function is somewhat insular and connects to the full nodes to support a larger population of these SPV wallets. Um, what we can look at doing to, uh, and, if, and often given as a reason against scaling, is the cost of running one of these uh, reddish looking full nodes. That's too expensive. Uh, if we go to 16 megabyte blocks, we might have half the number of full nodes we have today, and this is terrible. So it's important to have a, a vision of how could, what's our answer to that? How can we prevent that from happening? Um, and uh, the idea that could be explored, this is not a concrete proposal, but just a, uh, a, a, an idea, um, is to give uh, new types of nodes that are basically designed around serving as these clients. And you basically have three uh, capabilities. The nice thing about these nodes is they only need SPV security themselves, because the SPV client can't tell any different anyway. So it doesn't need to have the full blockchain. It needs to be able to provide the proofs from that diagram that I showed. It's something it might need to be able to do. But it wouldn't necessarily need to be able to do that for anything. Um, if nodes were able to find uh, provers that were able to prove the specific inputs that they need to verify the transaction, they could do that. They could do that by chasing down the node that's able to do that. 
Um, now that is slow compared to the current network because you have to do some routing. But the thing is, this is one transaction we're talking about. This is not. This is a very different problem from a full node, a minor type node that has to have the entire UTXO set in memory. Uh, this is a network that collectively needs the ability to support a random transaction that may appear at any moment. So these two uh, prover and being able to service and being able to find the prover, and with a, uh, a third thing which I call it the transaction repeater, which is basically uh, I'll go into each one a little bit more. Um, the prover uh, provides the, spent, the proofs, and you would shard the transaction space. Not the block space, but the transaction space, but the transaction ID because that's how you look up inputs. And you can have that be of any character stem or one character stem or however big of a node you wanted to have. Um, and so they would store a slice of the blockchain, or not so much a slice of the blockchain, but a big bucket of transactions anchored to the blockchain so that these proofs can be provided and indexed by transaction ID, which the software already has. Um, it would advertise, or it would advertise to this minor network uh, the stems that it serves. And <clears throat> collectively, the network could validate anything and always could fall back to full node, which would provide these proofs for, for anything. The full node has already got everything in there. Uh, like a key problem, which I don't think, not, not problem, but challenge, engineering challenge, I don't want to minimize this. Building, this is one of the same challenges that the Lightning Network has, which is when you need to go validate your transaction, of course you can go to a full node. But it's important that you want to try to use these partial nodes because they need to be important. Because in order for it to be them to be contributing to decentralization, they have to be given a flow of proof so that they can participate. And that if, they, if there's some problem where the 200 remaining full nodes try to take over the network, uh, that these partial nodes can disprove them by, by being asked and by telling the truth, by them linking to the actual blockchain, not failing to provide it, which can happen. Uh, so the finder service is, is, is uh, this could be a number of different ways. They have onion routing and design for lightning network. What I picture for this is it might be something very similar uh, to DNS where you would ask a, a service, who do I ask, then they tell you, and then you ask that you know, directly. Seems like, it seems like it might work, but uh, I haven't tried it. And the third type of uh, service that's needed, uh, or in the full notes provide today to SPV wallets, is uh, uh, I call it a transaction repeater. We have node that needs to host the blue filters. So today, my nodes may host like at any one time, they may be connected to maybe 75 different SPV wallets hosting the blue filter for each one of them. Uh, but they also have the full blockchain. You can have a, a node with the capability to be more specialized in hosting blue filters and also really transactions. So it has to see all the transactions uh, in order to know if they match the blue filters. Um, I don't see this being able to get rid of the blue filters, uh, although another idea would be to shard the address space. But that's, that's uh, I haven't thought much about that. Um, the uh, relay might be subject to DOS, but, but you can, uh, because you can just send it a bunch of transactions and the system doesn't know how to validate them. But it could have SPP security where it would ask other nodes whether these transactions uh, are validated or whether it received it from its peers. Same technique that SPP wallet does today. So I don't see why we couldn't do that. Uh, this would scale the balloon filter uh, hosting function. Um, in proportion to the number of these nodes that exist. And it would scale, uh, it would decentralize that function also, so it's not just those 200, I'm just coming up with that number, it's very small. Maybe it's 2,000 full nodes that are left or whatever. Um, they wouldn't be the only ones that had to do that function for a billion wallets. If there's some number, if it's 1,000, we might need a million of these nodes, just tossing up numbers. So the new network with these nodes deployed would look something like this, where you'd have the addition of a lot of these partial nodes around um, that uh, wallets are mostly connecting to, uh, rather than so they're getting their transactions from there. 
and when they need to, when they get a payment, um, they need to verify it. So they, they would, this guy down here with the green line has been told that, okay, maybe you got a transaction that have three inputs. So you might need to have that dotted green line to shoot out to three different nodes to check on the inputs. Uh, and if, it's, if he's given the correct proof and absence of spend proof, uh, he would say that checks out. If he's not given a proof, he'd say this is very suspicious because I just asked an expert. He could also ask two experts or three or four to figure that. Uh, and nobody could provide a proof of that input. I think he'd probably treat that transaction as totally invalid. Um, and if you ask uh, all those guys that they, they, none of them give you a spend proof, so you can actually, if it's spent long ago and it's a confirmed transaction, you can prove that with the Merkle branch also, or even for an unconfirmed transaction, if there's been an unconfirmed transaction, spending that input already seen, there's no one would also be an expert in that and would tell you that. Um, you would have to ask several of them to build up the confidence that that had not happened. So, these are mostly capabilities that SPB wallets don't have today, so it's a simultaneous improvement of uh, well, a bunch of benefits of this. Uh, you can get an increased TX rate uh, and maintain this decentralization, not lose decentralization. Um, there's a path to a billion SPV wallets, uh, smaller nodes, retaining a critical role because they're asked to validate transactions. You could have increased light wallet security. There's nothing that degrades the security about this. And then what, this, what differentiates this as a, is really a network improvement from things like Lightning and other ideas is that there's no consensus changes required to do this. Um, there's no changes to transaction authoring, what you have to do to make a transaction. There's no changes to, for a merchant or a, an exchange to what kind of, they don't have to start taking HTLCs or some new thing. It's just the same. There's no capital funding required, like some of these solutions. No co-signer is necessary. Uh, there is a lot of work to be done. I mean, like the one slide about the DNS type service is where they're hand waving. It would be a lot of work just right there to get that to get that right. But this, it's very similar. It's been done before in other areas. Um, it can be built incrementally, incrementally and uh, emulated on mainnet. Uh, because a full node, you can build these new definitions of these service protocols and then the full node can just implement them. And that probably is how you do it at first because right now, the last point is, we don't actually need this yet. We have open connection slots right now. Now if we bring the block size up, I don't, I don't know how that would change it, but uh, we, we don't need it now. And that's why it's really not on the top of it, but we can get ahead of this problem. And, uh, I think, it's a, I think it's an important thing to remember as we try, as we think about increasing the block size, uh, that we have we have this uh, population of SPV wallets, a solution that works uh, and can be scaled more quickly than it is being scaled. Segwit happening or not happening, and it could, I think it could easily be adopted if Segwit became a model and Segwit. I guess when you go to verify an input uh, or a transaction, are you going to verify the signature or not? I mean, the new transaction you probably do have the signature, so uh, probably would verify. Although I'm not sure if we, we don't generally today, right? So probably could be the truth. In SPD, I don't think I don't think SPD wallets generally. I, I have a, I have a uh, more like a question comment while you're gone. Because um, I, I, you quickly um, mentioned uh, that Lightning Network using the HDLCs, the hash lock, HLDC, getting that kind of problem. Um, the, the need for these sort of, um, sort of guaranteed transactions um, in 
order to scale up to a, a billion wallets um, is fundamentally different from a, uh, what you're talking about because it would change the model of payment from uh, pay me something and only when you send it I get it to I'm just going to have to watch my account and see you don't steal it from me and if you do steal it from me then I'm going to have to publish a you know, closed channel kind of thing. So it, 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 this would keep the current model of Bitcoin which is you don't have something until someone gives it to you as opposed to watching uh, that somebody doesn't steal your money from your channel from you. Yeah, and even just more basically, I, I just, the thing about Lightning to realize is that you're being paid something different. You, if you weren't, you're not getting Bitcoin like before. You're getting uh, an HTLC after doing all this setup stuff. And it, I'm sure it works, uh, it will work, but it, it's different. So you have to decide whether you accept these things or not, whereas uh, this stuff already all works. What's the instant for? Is that what Oh, I just called it the Scalable Payment Verification Network. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, I missed something on one of your slides. Were you saying that you'd like to add uh, some additional information to the blockchain to make some properties more useful? No. Oh, okay. Uh, no, there's nothing additional in the header. SPD clients already have the entire header chain. So when you're given a proof, it's got the normal branch that connects you to somewhere in your header chain which you've already decided is the valid chain. It's not embedding it in the header, it's connecting to 